أكبر الله إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا وسيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله وخليله من خلقه وصفيه أما بعد فنسأل الله سبحانه وتعالى بأسمائه الحسنى وصفاته العلى أن يجعلنا وإياكم من المستمعين للقول والمتبعين أحسنا كما نسأله أن يجعل ما نقوله ونسمعه حجة لنا لا علينا يوم الدين ثم ما بعد فالسلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته We are still on a journey through either the words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or the words of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam because the words of Allah jalla wa ala are the best, the best of words and the guidance of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is the best of all guidances and this is why we always and at all times need to read the Qur'an and revisit the Sunnah of Khair al Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam so that we would know what life should look like, so that we would know how to connect to Allah, so that we would know how Allah wants us to be, loves us to be, hates us to be in order to stay away from these traits. We ask Allah jalla wa ala to make us of the people of Qur'an wa Sunnah, Allahumma ameen. Today Allah jalla wa ala will speak to us and He gives a story, He tells us a story. Now the stories of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the Qur'an are not called qisas, they are called qasas. نَحْنُ نَقُصُّ عَلَيْكَ أَحْسَنَ الْقَصَصِ Allah says we are the one that tell the most beautiful of qasas. In the Arabic language there is difference between qasas and qisas. Qasas are always true stories and qisas can either be imaginary or true. This is why when people say qisasun nabiyin, no. When Allah tells them they are qasas. When people tell them sometimes they invent things so that all of a sudden becomes qisas and that's the difference between qasas and qisas. So when Allah Jalla wa Ala subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us نَحْنُ نَقُصُّ عَلَيْكَ we tell you the most beautiful of stories. People are looking for storytellers. Like back in the days when you would go to any kind of tribe, there would always be that storyteller. People would sit around the campfire, gather, come together, shivering, but his words were worth it. Now Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, I am the one that tells them. But where are the ones that want to listen to them? I'm the ones that share, I'm the one that shares them. But who's the one that wants to receive them? And we have as an admonishment made easy the Quran and as a reminder. But is there anybody out there that wants to be admonished? that wants to be spoken to? Do you know by just opening the Qur'an that Allah Jalla wa Ala is talking to you? Like you open the Qur'an, that's Kalamullah, laysa bi makhluq. You don't have to climb a mountain, you don't need to dive into the depths of the oceans, you don't need to risk your life, you just need to walk towards a shelf, take it from the shelf, open the book and read. So I think that sometimes our connection with the Qur'an is representative of our love for the, for the one who said these words. You cannot keep on claiming loving someone, but not wanting to listen to what that someone has to say. <coughs> so this is why when Allah says, نَحْنُ نَقُصُّ عَلَيْكَ أَحْسَنَ الْقَصَصِ بِمَا أَوْحَيْنَا إِلَيْكَ هَذَا الْقُرْآنِ We want now to sit, figuratively speaking, not around the campfire, but in the mosque, in the house of Allah Jalla wa Ala, listening to what he has to say. The story of today is actually a reflection of people who want to live a good life without thinking of others and all while forgetting about Allah. People who are good on their own, but they don't want others to know how good they are or how good they are doing in their lives because they're afraid that they have to give a share to others who are in need. Allah says we have tested them. Who did you test, Ya Rabbi? Because there's nothing preceding it. So who did you test? Allah will explain. 
We tested them, meaning everybody who is similar to them. Like when you say Allah is testing them, then the first thing you want to know is who are those that were tested so that I do not look like them because then I will be tested exactly like them. That's the way the Quran works. There is tajawub, meaning that you interact with the Quran. There's nothing like reading a verse and then doing like it doesn't exist and carry on to the next and then not asking yourself what it's all about. When the Prophet would read the Quran, Quran, he would live and interact emotionally with the Quran. And this is why they say whenever he would read a verse, and then Allah says, Subhan. They said, like Imam al Nawawi says, Yani, then you would lower your voice because you are afraid to say out loud these words that Allah would have had a son. So he says, when you come to that verse, you lower your voice. And when you give the jawab, the answer, you raise it again. So you say, So you raise your voice. This is a ta'ayush. The same thing when you read a verse about Jannah, you ask Allah Jannah. When you read a verse about Jahannam, you ask Him to protect you against Jahannam. If you interact with the Quran like this, the Quran will turn into your life. The Quran will turn into your heart. The Quran will turn into the spring of your heart, like the Prophet said. And turn the Quran into the spring of my heart. Yani an everlasting spring. What is spring about? It is about these flowers opening. It's about life after death. It's about beauty. It's about colors. It's about these beautiful perfumed flowers and scents. It is there where the birds start yani, what, flying around everywhere again. They return from the faraway lands that they flew towards to and they come back enjoying nature. Turn the Quran, Ya Rabbi, into the spring of my heart so that I can rejoice within so that my spring is here. I don't need a spring out there. I don't need any exterior thing to make me happy. As long as I have the Quran in my heart, then I have everything. And if I don't have the Quran in my heart, then I have nothing. The Prophet said, Inna lillahi ahleen. Yani Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you remember, has a family on the face of the earth. Not family like blood ties, but he treats them like family. And they are his chosen ones. They said, Ya Rasulullah, who are they? Remember he said, Hum ahlul Qur'an. They are the people of Qur'an. Hum ahlullahi wa khasatuhu min khalqihi. They are Allah's people. The people of the Qur'an are Allah's people and his chosen ones amongst creation. His chosen ones. And that's why the Prophet ﷺ said, One vessel will never, never break. Yeah, he will never be thrown into hell. One vessel will never break. They said, which vessel, Ya Rasulullah? He says, the one that contains the Quran. The one that contains the Quran. So now to come back. Allah is telling us this story. So we better listen carefully. Inna balawnahum. Yani the story will take us three khutbas, by the way. Because every word in the Quran is for a reason. When Allah said, He didn't say balawnahum. He said, Inna balawnahum. Surely, verily, truly, definitely, we are the ones that tested them. Just this here should make us think. Whenever there is something that we are overpowered by in life, whatever it may be, with ourselves, with our families, with our children, with our wealth, with our health, with our job, with our status, with everything we enjoy in this life. When you are tested in it, then don't turn into a rebel. We definitely tested them. So when you're overpowered, you are not that Viking that says, who is the one attacking me? You are the one that says, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is doing to me what he wants to do with me. And I am not able to take it away from him. So this is where you start living the life. When things happen to you, of course, you're going to try to get out of them. But with your heart, you know Allah is testing me. <laughs> to many people, when you talk about tests, it's always like test is only being hungry. Being tested is being divorced. <laughs> being tested is having no house. Being tested is having no money. Being tested is having no, yani, not enjoying good health and wealth. 
But that's not the only thing. When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned Sulaiman alayhi salam and he gave him that big dominion, that big kingdom, he said, this is from my Lord Liyabluwani, so that he would test me. He tests you through health like he tests you through sickness and wealth and poverty. And that's why the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, among some of my slaves, yani Allah, this hadith could see, yani Allah said, among some of my slaves, Nothing is suited for them but wealth. If I would make them poor, they would reject my religion. And some of my servants, for them, nothing is suited but poverty. If I would enrich them, they would reject my religion. So for some of my slaves, nothing is good but, but what? But, did we say health or wealth before? You can answer when I ask you something. In the khutbah, it's okay. Health. health. And for some of my servants, only wealth. Nam is suitable if I would make them poor and also health and what and poverty. And then he said, for some of my servants, only knowledge is good. If I would make them ignorant, they would reject my religion. And for some of my people, it is better to be a bit more ignorant because if I would give them and bestow upon them knowledge, they would reject my religion. And Al Qasim, I am the one that divides. I am the one that knows. So sometimes you want something in life and you think you know better than Allah. You've been going for ages and ages and ages. You have that dream, you want it, you're going for it, but it just doesn't happen. And then you die without it having ever happened in your life. Know that if you've given it your everything and that you have risen your hands to the Lord of the skies and the heavens and that it doesn't happen, that because, that's because it's better for you. So we try. Ya Rabbi help me, and you try and you, you go forward and it doesn't happen, then maybe that what you are complaining about is exactly that what will get you in Jannah. How many people hate it? The very key they needed to unlock the door to Eden. How many people are complaining right now? Why is this happening to me? Why, have, why has that happened to me? Why me? Why not, not somebody else? Maybe you're just complaining about the love that Allah has for you. And no, being loved by Allah is never easy. The more He loves you, the more He purifies you. And the more He purifies you, the more He will take away from you. And the more He take, takes away from you, the more you will finally end up with nobody but Him. It is the moment that you lose everything that you go down on your knees. It is the moment that you lose everything that you say, Ya Rabbi, please. It is the moment that you go down on your knees, that you think that all the doors in the dunya are locked, that the door to the sky is the only one that remains unlocked. It is there where your night are being used. It is there where the tears keep on flowing. It is there where you find your weak self and the strength of the Lord Almighty Allah. So why should we be complaining? Why do we complain? This is not our earth. This is not our earth. This is not our sky. This is not our soil. This is not even our body. It will go away to another place. We don't know. Eaten by the worms devoured by the soil, and the only thing that will remain is that soul that will eventually be brought back alive, Qiyamah, and be given a new body. So now, inna balawnahum. We are the ones that tested them. You've got a problem with my tests? Well, that's your problem, not mine. I tested you. And this is why Allah uses the plural. Sometimes He uses the plural, and sometimes He uses the singular. Now, Allah does what He does. We tested them. Like we tested the people of the garden. Tell me more, Ya Rabbi, please, about the people of the garden so that I will not be like them. That was the first characteristic. They were people, they had the garden. They had a, a very big piece of land. Everybody would look up to them. Every year the poor would be waiting with their hands spread out. Waiting, waiting for them to receive a small portion of what Allah had bestowed upon them. Yani, and they said, in the, what did they say? Yani, they had sworn by Allah that they would harvest in the very morning. But Allah says, وَلَا يَسْتَثْنُونَ But they didn't say, inshallah. They were sure, exactly like you are sure. You're sure that you have your house somewhere out there. 
even if it's rented. You've got your car, you've got your children, you've got your wife, you've got your parents, you've got all of that. And you're, you don't say, inshallah, you just say, I'm going back home and see my children. I'm going to eat this, this, and that tonight. Until Allah Jalla wa ala shows you that He's the King. Until Allah tells you, like, you can want what you want, want what you want. But if I don't want it, you will not get it. So, wala yastafnoon. That's the danger. They did not say, inshallah. So that means that at a certain point, their health and wealth made them ignorant of Allah. Their health and their wealth, at a certain point, they attributed it to themselves. They forgot in the morning and the evening to thank the Almighty for what He had given. And wealth, my friend, is, is not always a lot. I mean, if you have five pounds, that more, that's more than many other people in the world. If you only have one piece of bread, that's more than the children in Yemen now dying out of hunger. I mean, wealth is what... For you, it may be 50 pounds for somebody else, it may be a million pounds for somebody else, like a billion is nothing. But you know what wealth is for you. So now, So what was the result? A torment of their Lord was sent upon their soil while they were sleeping. Look, this is very often the way it works. If you forget about Allah, you've got big plans, ex expect your plans to be ruined, or expect you to succeed in that plan without thinking of Allah, and then it will be your, your downfall. Every plan, my friend, and everything you try to succeed at in life, and you do succeed at it, if it is without Allah, it will eventually destroy you, you will end up like somebody with a plan, but without the Lord of the plan. So you've got two people. Those who arrive and all their way towards their plan was Rabbi, Rabbi. And when they achieve the goal, they say, Hadha min fadli Rabbi. This is from the favor of my Lord. But those people who don't ask Allah at the beginning, when they want to start executing their plan, those who do not ask Allah at the beginning, are those who will not thank Allah, will not thank Allah at the very end. And those are similar to the people of that garden, as you will see. A punishment has been sent upon them. But Allah says, وَهُمْ نَائِمُونَ Why نَائِمُونَ? Why not وَهُمْ يَضْحَكُونَ? Why not وَهُمْ يَلْعَبُونَ? It is when you sleep that you are unaware of everything. Sleeping actually shows that you are most likely living a good life. Because when you know how to sleep, you most likely are not in the midst of a war. You're not in the midst of problems. You're not thinking all night long about the solutions to your problems. So Allah says, I punished them while they were unaware. I punished them while they were not expecting it. It turned into ashes. All their God, imagine you wake up, it is now your house, your car. Your everything, everything you have, your clothes, even your passport. Now that's like everything is burnt. Everything is gone. Now you wake up, you even don't know how to prove who you are. <laughs> who are you? I'm this person. Well, we first have to check two weeks before they verify who you truly are. Nothing. You have no money to live anywhere. Nothing. فَأَصْبَحَتْ كَسَرِينَ That was like ashes. So some say the adab of Allah Jalla wa ala, was a reeh fiha adabun alim that came with fire, according to some of the Mufassirin. So there was a fire somewhere, and the wind brought that fire, blazing, enraged fire. Angry with those who do not say, inshallah. Angry with those who think that they can do it alone. You can't. So, فَأَصْبَحَتْ كَالصَّرِيمِ فَتَنَادَوا مُصْبِحِينَ and they will cop not knowing about their garden and, and they will cop you will let us go yani let you go early in the morning if you really want to harvest yani, and then they went and they were whispering Allah said so they went 
وهم يتخافتون أن لا يدخلنها اليوم عليكم مسكين and they said today when we're going to harvest we're going in silence so that none of those who are needy will hear us and receive something from us so before they used to give to the people but subhanallah very ajeeb sometimes when you're mid rich you're a new rich then you have a bit rich and then you have very rich sometimes at the very start when you become a bit richer you're still a bit generous because you still remember where you came from but then as you grow richer and richer, you start to forget about the pains of life. You start to forget about what people need. And actually you're fearful sometimes to become poor again. And that is where you start with holding not only your zakat, but also your sadaqat. So they were whispering. So Allah knew in advance that they would not use their wealth for the sake of the people. They, you don't have to give everything. You give a share of it. But they didn't want to do this anymore. So Allah destroyed it even before them getting there. And that is when Allah wants good for you. Then He takes away from you what you don't want to use for Him. Then He destroys what is not for His sake so that you would not be punished in this life before the next. As you will see at the end of the story, these people return to Allah. So now, وَهُمْ يَتَخَافَتُونَ أَلَّا يَدْخُلَنَّهَا الْيَوْمَ عَلَيْكُمْ مِسْكِينَ وَغَدَوْا عَلَى حَرْضٍ قَادِرِينَ فَلَمَّا رَأَوْهَا قَالُوا And that is for next week. They arrived and they saw it say, Oh, we sure must be wrong. This is not our piece of land. But then they come to the realization that it's Allah who took it away from them. And this is not just a parable. It really, it's not a metaphor. It really existed. But it is used for everybody who is like them who's planning in his life, not connecting to Allah, thinking and attributing everything to himself with a couple of people that are at the same level as that person. And then one day, or just you as an individual, you wake up and your plan has been ruined. When your dunya plans have been ruined, look at the niyyah you had when you were planning. When the plans in your dunya are ruined, then you have to look at the niyyah you had when you were designing your plan. Where was Allah's share in your plan? That's the message that we share with you today in everything you do. When you got married, my friend, was your main goal to please Allah? When you had children, was it just the result of being husband and wife? Or was there another reason behind it? The job that you were looking for, the clothes that you were looking for, and any other thing that you undertake in your life, where was Allah in your planning? If Allah is not in it, then either He allows it to exist, but then He can take you to account for it on Yom al or He can make it exist and make you repent and keep on holding or allowing for you to hold on to it, or either what you do it from the very beginning. And this is why Ibn Atta'i has said, the one who is enlightened, enlightened at the beginning will be illuminating others at the very end. اللهم اهدنا فيمن هديت وعافنا فيمن عافيت وتولنا فيمن توليت وبارك لنا فيما اعطيت وقنا واصرف عنا شر ما قضيت فانك تقضي ولا يقضى عليك فانه لن يعز من عاديت ولن يذل من واليت تباركت ربنا وتعاليت اللهم لا تجعل الدنيا اكبر همنا ولا مبلغ علمنا ولا الى النار مصيرنا واجعل الجنه هي دارنا وقرارنا ومستقرنا يا ربنا اللهم ارنا في الظالمين يوما اسودا اللهم ارنا في الظالمين يوما اسودا اللهم ارنا في الظالمين يوما اسودا، اللهم كن مع المسلمين في كل مكان، اللهم كن معهم يا رب العالمين، اللهم انا نسالك يا ربنا ان تجعل بقاءنا في هذه الدنيا صوم ولقاء معكم عيدا، اللهم اجعل خير يومنا يوما نلقاك فيه، واصلي واسلم على رسولنا الكريم، واستغفر الله انه هو الغفور الرحيم.